Let's get to it. A University of Denver poll released this week shows Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump neck and neck at 39% among likely voters in Colorado. Third party candidates Jill Stein and Gary Johnson combined to make up 15% of the poll, while 8% remain undecided. Meanwhile, presidential candidates and family members continue to visit Colorado this week and will be here this weekend. Uh, Patty, for several weeks, we've been writing off Colorado and lamenting that we're not a swing state anymore. We didn't get any attention. Well, we're back to Sally Field status. We're, we're back to getting all the attention. Is, do we merit the attention? Well, I would be happier if we didn't have all that attention on us. <laughs> Remember when the University of Denver hosted the debate eight, uh, eight years ago and it was just such a really strong event and you, DU looked so great? What's happened to DU? How could they do a poll that came <laughs> out with a, a dead heat at this point? You look around Colorado and you just don't see it, but you never know. Maybe there's secret pockets of a, Trumpism that I'm just not aware of in this town. Certainly it's not the people who've been following his son's really brilliant performances in Colorado. Yesterday we had Eric Trump um, on, the on the air with Ross Kaminsky at KHOW talking about how, oh, maybe David Duke should take a bullet. Now, no one really is a big fan of David Duke, but that still doesn't mean we should be executing him. Uh, so there's that. Then we also had Donald Trump Jr. who made fun of the Aurora Theater shootings. Mm -hmm also really not very sensitive. I would, be, I would be really happy to get rid of all the different people coming to stump on behalf of the candidates, all the surrogates. It is just getting exhausting. It's blocking the streets. It is definitely clogging my mind. I would like them gone, and I'll be very happy when Tuesday is over. It is like we are living in this bizarro parallel universe. <laughs> well, let's go right to there. Craig, are we living in a bizarro world? Maybe, the Cubs won, so uh, <laughs> here's the thing. I'm the perfect, late-deciding, independent voter. And because I do talk radio, it's fascinating. It's scary, too, at times depressing. I hate this early voting that we have in Colorado because I'm a trial lawyer. Every court battle, it's only fair to hear all of the evidence and listen to the final closing arguments. And a lot has happened since the ballots went out. This uh, last Friday, James Comey, I mean, there's a war going on between the FBI and the Department of Justice. This is calamitous for our country. And if Hillary Clinton's elected, it's going to continue. You can get rid of Comey as a 10-year term, but you can make him leave. But you've got hundreds of FBI guys who have investigated Clinton Cash. And how many times around this table have you guys talked about Clinton Cash? I read it two years ago. I've had Peter Schweitzer on my show three times. It's factual. It's disturbing. It's selling out the office of Secretary of State for the personal enrichment of the Clintons and their buddies. And it's all being corroborated now on WikiLeaks. And there's Project Veritas stuff where the Democrats pay to beat up people. This guy, Robert Kramer, husband of Jan Schakowsky, connected to Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. People are paying attention. And that's why Donald Trump could win Colorado. I think this early voting, the Democrats have put in more ballots, but I think a lot of those ballots may say Gary Johnson on it. I had Gary Johnson on my show this past Saturday, and he made a little national news. CNN picked up on it because he called Hillary Clinton corrupt, and she is corrupt. And so when people come to see that, they're like me. Sometimes I object in court, but sometimes I say, I really object, <laughs> and I do object to Hillary Clinton, so much so that I'm thinking about voting for Donald Trump, which is pretty darn scary, because I see all his flaws just like you do. So you say you do talk radio. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I, I, uh, well, you, and he's also in David's chair, it, that's so true. it's and a so double there's, there's a lot of different things coming to play here. Eric, when you look at this poll, um, is this more about Trump momentum or Clinton decline? Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. It is about both. I mean, the, the CNN this morning had an electrical, electoral map with Hillary below 270, or at least potentially below 270. There has been a drain on Clinton support over the last two weeks. You always want to, these things are always ebb and flows and ebb and flows or roller coasters, but you want to end on the uptick. And Trump, 
I don't know if it's through luck or conniving or good strategy, is ending on an uptick, and, and Clinton is, seems to be ending on a downtick. Now, we still have four days to go, and in this wild thing, no one would predict uh, what is still out there. I go back to what we have talked about before. If Colorado is competitive, if Colorado is close, much less, close meaning maybe a point or two, much less if Trump wins Colorado, he is likely to win the country. I, if he can sell that message in Colorado, where he has done everything possible to offend this state, whether it was calling our caucus system, which I'm not a, anyone who watches knows I'm not a fan of the caucus system, but when he attacked the Republican establishment back during the, those days for um, a rigged, rigged system here, his comments about Latino voters, the goldmine of Colorado politics has always been suburban college educated women. He has done everything possible to alienate that constituency. If he can still be competitive in this state, um, then there may be a wave going across the country. It might be, as Patty's words, bizarro, bizarro land here. And we've, you know, l Lord knows we've lived through a bizarro, a bizarro campaign. Natasha, I both respect Floyd Cerulli, who is part of this polling, and the University of Denver. They're both credible in my eyes. But the other part for me is timing. Mm -hmm. uh, we have, we've, people have had uh, their ballots in their house, or probably gotten rid of them by now, for a long time in Colorado. So how much effect, uh, how do you look at that when you look at early election here in Colorado, and how you perceive this poll? Well, what I think is interesting, too, is not just the timing of the fact that it comes so late after many people have their ballots and have probably actually voted, but in addition to that, it comes right after Trump is in Colorado and makes his statements about the legitimacy of the results. So one one of the numbers is sort of buried in this, this poll that they gave was that 22 percent of people said that if Hillary won, they would question the legitimacy of the election. And drilling down even further in that, if if Hillary won, Trump supporters felt 47 percent of them thought or would question the legitimacy of the election. And again, that comes shortly after Trump makes those statements here in Colorado. So those type of things can really sway the mood of a poll like this. But I think that points to maybe a more um, threatening or concerning result than who wins, whether it's Hillary or Trump. This country has a lot of ground to make up in reunifying, reunifying over a variety of issues. And that particular number points to that more than anything, more than who you are actually going to vote for. And what we do after the election, I think, is a really key thing and that we need to study. And that's what this, this poll started to, started to discuss, at least.